Hello, Beauty and the Beast Jr. cast and crew. Today, we're going to talk about The 12 Guideposts by Michael Shirtliff. This is from his book called The Audition, and this technique is an intellectual way to dive into how a character thinks and who they are beneath the surface. So, the first guidepost is relationships. What is my relationship to other characters in the scene? But most importantly, how do you feel about them? Is it somebody that you care about? Is it somebody that you could care less for? Is it somebody that you've never met before and you don't have any sort of opinion about? Um, the next question to ask in relationships is, where is the love? And love comes in many different forms. So he quotes, a quote from him is, the desire for love, to give it or receive it, and preferably both simultaneously, is, chi is the chief propell propellant in human beings. So human beings, we're always trying to find somebody to listen to us, somebody to care about us. And we're also trying to put that energy back in the world. So as your character, what is their love? Who are they, who are they looking for? Um, if you are in one of the villager scenes, um, the love that you can find could be with a friend who runs the shop next door to you. Um, a more obvious choice would be between Belle and the Beast. You know, they're both looking for somebody to listen to them and somebody that they can care for and somebody who sees them for who they actually are. So, relationships, right? Um, every single relationship is different, whether it's between mother and daughter, friend and friend, teacher to student, every relationship is going to be different, but what's most important is how you feel about that other person. So if you take some time to think about that for each of your characters um, or each of the ensembles that you're in, then that can help you get a feel for the world around you. The second guidepost is conflict. If there is no conflict in our story, then what are we doing here? There's no point. If you were to go see a show and it was a girl eating ice cream on stage, the end. Is that an exciting show to see? No. But if the girl were eating ice cream and then suddenly a dog ran onto the stage and knocked her over and knocked the ice cream out of her hand and ran away with her ice cream, she would then have to figure out whether she wanted to go get the dog or how to deal with the situation that she was just dealt with. That creates a conflict. Now we're more interested. So the question to ask yourself when thinking about conflicts in your characters what are you fighting for? Everyone at every moment is fighting for something. Whether it's to be heard. Whether it's to be right. Whether it is to get this person away from me. No matter what, we're always fighting for something. The second question to ask is what tactics can you use to get your goal? I might, I want you to leave. So my tactic is going to be to be overly sweet to you and hope that my cavity sweetness pushes you away, right? Sometimes your tactic works, sometimes it doesn't, and you have to revamp and try another tactic. My next tactic might be to say, get out, there's the door, please leave, right? So what is the tactic you're taking to reach your goal? The next thing Michael Shortliff says is never settle for anything less than your biggest dream. So our characters on stage and us as actors, we have the opportunity to create strong choices or obvious choices. Sometimes the most obvious choice isn't going to be the strongest choice you could make. 
we on stage want our conflict, our importance, our drive on stage to be larger than life. Otherwise, there's no point in doing the show because then it's just everyday life. So let's say I am a villager in the opening number of Bell. My conflict is that I want to get bread from the baker. An obvious choice, a tactic could be to walk up to the baker and ask for it. To make it a little more challenging and a little more interesting, I might create a scenario where I said, I want to get bread from the baker, but I don't have the money to pay for it. So I have to figure out how to be nice enough so that the baker will give it to me for free. Or I have to find somebody who will buy it for me. Or I have to find a way to get money to get the bread so that I could buy it from the baker, right? So don't necessarily pick the easiest thing, but pick the thing that's most interesting while staying true to the storyline. Staying true to the storyline in all of these thoughts is something that's very important. You know, if we were doing Frozen, for example, and one of the townspeople thought my relationship to the king and queen is that I don't like them and I don't want them to be king and queen. Well, the opening number of Frozen is celebrating Arendelle and celebrating the wonderful kingdom that they live in. So that actor would not be able to make that choice show on stage because it's not staying true to what the author intended. So be aware of your role in all of these moments, meaning who are you in that moment? Are you a townsperson who is trying to buy something that day? Okay, then you're not necessarily going to be the person who is uh, trying to steal and rob something from everybody because this isn't Aladdin, right? So stay true to your story while picking the most interesting tactic that you can. Okay, numero three. This guidepost is something that I find to be extremely important and it always helps to jump in. It always helps the actor or me to jump into my role. Um, this one is called The Moment Before. What has just happened before the scene starts? Every selection starts in the middle, right? You will rarely find a show that starts at the beginning of someone's life and moves to the end. There's always a moment before. So if we're again talking about the prologue, or I'm sorry, the village scene in Belle, these people don't just begin their life saying, bonjour, bonjour. No, they were just, maybe they were at their houses. Maybe they were getting ready for the day. Maybe they were trying to cook food for their kids and they realized they didn't have enough eggs. Every single time you step on the stage, there should be a moment before in your mind. What has my character just been doing? So Michael Shirtliff says to use your imagination to fill in the blanks. The more interesting your moment before is, the more interesting your performance is from the very beginning. If you jumpstart your acting with a strong thought of what you were just doing, it won't take you half the scene to become interesting because I just ran onto the stage because I've been running and I tried to catch the bus and now I'm out of breath and now I'm going to talk to you. That's so much more exciting than entering the stage and figuring out what's going on now. Have it pre-thought in your head so that you can say, this is what my character was just doing, this is where I'm going, and this is where it leads to. All right, we're just gonna go up to number six today and we'll do the next six tomorrow. So the fourth guidepost doo -doo -doo, is humor. Michael Shirtliff says that there's humor in everything not just in the comedic sections or in the funniest part of the show or said by the Harlequin of the show. 
humor exists at all moments and it's our job as actors to be able to find where that humor exists so that we're not just dwelling in a place of dark goth sadness right in life we seek humor even in the most serious situations it helps us cope so you hear the you hear the phrase uh i'm always the person who cries at a funeral somebody who can't necessarily take life seriously um when they need to or um it might be a moment where uh two people are arguing and it's a really heated argument and then all of a sudden they just burst out laughing because they realize how ridiculous their fight actually is there's humor in everything so being aware of where the humor could exist playing up that moment or acknowledging the fact that my character is serious in this moment but the fact that I am being so serious is where the humor comes in. Being aware of where the humor lies in the situation can help the audience piece together the ups and downs of the story. Michael Shirtliff says, look for the humor. If it's not there, put it there. That's our job. All right, number five. Also hugely important for knowing the status of where you are. That's what number five is good for. Five is opposites. Whatever you decide is your motivation in the scene. The opposite is also true and should be in it. If I don't like person A, at some point in this scene or in our relationship, there is a moment where because I don't like this person so much, I might love that I hate them. Or if I, if my goal is to become the greatest superhero in the world and to save the world every single day, there is somewhere in this story, somebody whose goal is to be the best supervillain in the world. So being aware of those two opposites will help, once again, the audience figure out where the story's going and where it should go. So always be aware of what the purpose of your role is and the purpose of somebody else's role. Michael Shirtliff says, in all humans, opposites exist. exist. In all of us, there is love and hate creativity and self-destructive de tendencies, etc. No matter what you feel, we as humans always feel conflicting emotions, right? You've heard that before. Like, oh, I really want to, but at the same time, I don't want to. We have so many different complex thought processes that in order to create a realistic character, we don't just feel one thing. We feel all of these things at once. And being able to see those layers come out of a character on stage will really make your role so much more interesting to watch. Um, if you play the opposites, you'll keep the audience intrigued. So if your character is supposed to... Maybe I'm Ursula, right? Ursula stereotypically is the bad guy, the bad girl, right? I want to get Ariel's voice and become the queen of the sea and take Triton down. But I have to be aware of the opposite going on here. The opposite would be Triton's my brother. He raised me growing up and he loved me when nobody else did and I care for him and I care for his daughter and I'm trying to protect Ariel by taking her voice away so that she doesn't get hurt by this we weird human right so if you play that opposite it has a possibility of really affecting the audience in a different way that they hadn't thought of all right last one for today six and this I keep feeling like I say this for each one. This one is really fun and exciting to do on stage because it happens everywhere you go. Every moment you're on stage. Number six is discoveries. 
What's new? What are you learning? What's happening in this moment that makes you go, oh, now I get it, right? Every single moment of your life, there's a discovery. Every single moment in any relationship, there's a discovery. You could be married to your husband for 60 years, and then you wake up one morning and you see your husband eating grapefruit. Frank, why are you eating grapefruit? You've never eaten grapefruit in your life. Well, Sue, I really love grapefruit. It's just you've never bought it for me. Bam, discovery. What? Didn't even know that you liked grapefruit. And then we could we could implant this in any situation, right? Um, if we think about... Let's see. If we think about Belle going into the West Wing for the first time, her discovery would be, whoa, there is so much more going on than I understand with this guy. He's not just some terrible, awful, scary thing. He, there's a reason why he is this way. That's a discovery, an aha moment. So Michael Shirtliff says every scene should contain discoveries, things that happen for the first time. Us as actors, we have the terribly hard task of memorizing our blocking, memorizing our lines, memorizing our emotions, and then the moment you step on stage, you have to put all of that away. And you have to pretend like you are learning these things for the very first time and letting that wonder just sink over you and wow, like, whoa, I'm in a castle, like look at all of this stuff. Even though like you helped build the castle, you know it's kinda, it's going to be there. Right? It's our job to create that sense of wonder and the sense of newness. Otherwise, the audience can just read a book. Right? It's our job to keep it alive. So he also says to make discoveries about yourself. Right? I might realize maybe I'm not just a mean person. Maybe I'm actually being mean to these people because I want to be their friends. But I'm too scared to admit that to myself. Maybe your discovery about the other character is, huh, that girl's a lot nicer than I thought she would be. Or maybe I, hmm, <laughs> um, maybe it's, maybe I don't like that outfit, even though I thought I liked it in the store. I don't know. So there are just tons of different ways. Always keep that sense of discovery. Um, and you can also make discoveries about a situation. Oh, I see. You guys aren't actually fighting. You guys are flirting. Or, or it could be something more innocent than that. Um, maybe you enter into a group situation and there's a lot of people. Oh, you guys don't know each other. I was just telling you this whole story about Freddy over here and I didn't realize you didn't even know Fred. So let's go back and let's talk and meet Fred, right? Point being, make tons of discoveries. Um, keeping all of these thoughts in mind, there is no right or wrong way to create a character. The only thing that you can do as an actor is to put the thought into it and try. I can't tell you to sit down and write a paragraph for all six of these guideposts. But what I can tell you is if you spend the time and work on this stuff and think about it and really invest in discovering more about your character, it will show on stage. I can promise you it will. So put as much work into it as you want. Put as little work into it as you want. If you write it down and you want to send it to me, I would love to read it. Doing this work is some of the most fun work you can do in theater, in my opinion. It's all of the background stuff that you don't see on stage. And I'm so grateful we have the opportunity to really dive into it right now. So thank you all for listening. I will be sure to send the PDF of all 12 guideposts as well as a worksheet that has fill in the blanks if you want to use it. If you have any questions about any of this, please send me an email and I'd love to help. Thanks for listening. Have an awesome St. Patrick's Day. See you tomorrow.